Elite Annual Conference as the national host of this year's conference and the national partner on behalf of the Stifterwart, I would welcome you all to this year's conference. Um, I think you've convened very, very, very interesting speakers. I'm very much looking forward to them on this conference. And uh, the Stifterwart is proud to be a partner uh, of the ELI conference this year. And in fact, it matches very well with, with the activities of the Stifterverband, which are focused um, this week uh, in a conference week uh, that is called the Digital Turn. Um, since last Friday, more than 1,000 participants and more than 70 experts from higher education, politics, the private sector, discuss the potentials and challenges of the digital media in higher education. And we hope to continue this debate and enlarge this debate today uh, in the debates on the podium and the discussion afterwards. This event is the most international event in the whole week. So we're very much looking forward to the perspectives of other countries, to the European perspective, to the global perspective on the challenges we are facing and the question. Um, and uh, we are convinced that the question addressed in this ALIX annual meeting concerning the competences needed in the digital age throughout Europe is evidently crucial for the current transformation of our societies. It's my personal conviction and the conviction of the Stifterverband and all the companies that support the Stifterverband um, that we need discussion about the transformation in society, in industry, and the consequences for the educational system, for the higher educational system with regard to that transformation. But I also am convinced that we need analog forms of discussion and not only digital forms of collaboration. So I'm very much looking forward to the discussion we have today. This discussion will help us to understand better what is needed for tackling and mastering these challenges in an ever faster changing working and learning environment um, and will inspire us how to best handle this fundamental shift which we addressed uh, in the title of our week with the digital turn. This motto is addressing what is already happening today, but it also highlights what is needed to make good use of the special opportunities of our time so that we can design, innovate, and prototype new solutions, not, our, not only for our society, not only for the industrial sector, but also for the educational system um, and the society as a whole. I'm not certain whether you all know about the Stifterverband, and we're all familiar with the Stifterverband. We are a joint industry initiative uh, with a long history in Germany, and we are here to promote German science and education. We have more than 3,000 members. Nearly all the DAX uh, companies are members in our board. So um, I think we have um, the ability to, to uh, convene uh, the, the knowledge that is out there in industry and transport that into a, a debate with the institutions, the science and uh, educational institutions on the other side. Our mission is directed towards generating, generating and promoting new ideas for an innovative and efficient German higher education and research system. We all know how the internet and the digital media have changed entire sectors and societies, whole business models go down the drain, new business models pop up, not only in new fields of industry, but also in old fields of industry. Take the energy sector, for example, what is changing there right now. Um, so higher education is certainly and doubtlessly not immune to this fundamental process of transformation in our industry and society. And it shouldn't be. 
However, it would be a narrow perspective to look exclusive, uh, exclusively on digital media and the university business. And I'm happy that today we will address some of the broader changes in society and industry, as well in the other sectors of education. Globalization and the omnipresent availability of information have especially changed the way we work together nowadays. For more and more citizens and the workforce, it's part of their everyday life to work in heterogeneous, interdisciplinary, and international teams to use devices, often digital devices and machines. So sheer knowledge is no longer the key competence we need. It is rather the interface, the interface competence between human beings and the machine system uh, that is challenging not only industry, but also the educational system. The way we teach, the way we learn, the way we collaborate, and the contents of what we teach and what we need as skills for an ever-changing world in society and industry. So we need to critically reflect on whether the old methods of teaching and learning are still useful in, the developing, in developing these competencies for the 21st century. As the Stifterband, we do so as the part of the National Expert Forum on the Digital Future of Higher Education, a joint initiative with the German Rectors Conference and the Center for Higher Education. And the whole endeavor is funded by the German Ministry for Education and Research. This forum acts as a think tank on digital higher education with almost 100 experts right now from higher education politics and the private sector, working in six task groups and if you want to know more about uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this expert panel, uh, we have built up uh, some information uh, in the back. Um, the one thing is the discussion among the experts. And uh, there is um, a strong convic conviction on where to go and how to, how to get there. But we found out that there is a large bridge that still has to be built between the experts and the nerds <laughs> who are dealing with technological devices uh, that can enhance our way we work and we learn, and the ones who applicate it in the university and the educational system. And I think this bridge has to be built, and this gap has to be bridged. And this is still a very, very big challenge. It's not enough to introduce digital media into classes and lectures. Rather, digital education is a strategic task for universities and politics and their private partner sectors. So I very much look forward to the European perceptions of the challenges which I have addressed. Um, I'm looking forward to the conference. Let me tell you that after the conference, there will be another uh, panel which is sort of separated, but if you want to stay, please join us. It's a, it's a very nice discussion on Science 2.0. So we not, have, we not only deal uh, with transformation of how we learn and how we teach, but also how we do science, how we publish, how we work with big data, how we uh, get access to data, how we transform this access from the knowledge of experts to society. This also addresses uh, new challenges and new business models, let me tell you. Uh, the publishing companies know about that. Uh, and this will be addressed on the, uh, on the panel discussion tonight. So let me thank you uh, for this wonderful partnership. And now, Mr. Schaub, it's up to you to open this conference. Thank you. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a really great pleasure uh, to welcome you in this wonderful location. Um, I, can, I can feel we have even sun. It's not the spot, it's the sun. <laughs> so it's, uh, uh, it, it is light, it is, it is uh, big, it is wonderful, it is great architecture. Uh, so a warm welcome uh, to you all, and uh, thank you very much for joining uh, this uh, E-League Annual Conference 2015. 
I'm speaking to you as the Secretary General of the European Learning Industry Group, but I take the liberty also of at times using some other hats uh, that I happen uh, to have. And one, one of these hats is uh, the Peter Drucker Society and Peter Drucker Forum, and the other, the European Foundation for Management Development. And I will do that because there are connections to what we, what we do here, and we are always talking about better integrating what we do in different places. So I'll, I'll do a, an attempt, I'll, I'll, I'll have an attempt to do that. Um, uh, the, the EFMD deals with the education of managers and executives, uh, and uh, the Drucker Forum with the, if I may say so, with the content. What, what, is the, what are the core issues in management and leadership? What should it be? What, what is the role in society? Now, I like very much the motto of uh, the last couple of days uh, that you had already uh, uh, in, the, uh, in this series of events um, in, term, in terms of digital, the digital term, term because it says, it, it, may, it, it gives a statement that there's something we could manage. It's not only a disruption coming on us and we are helpless, but we might be able to take a turn in the right direction, hopefully. I mean, not a U-turn for sure, but I think we, we need to know uh, where to turn and we know that uh, uh, this, is, um, this is a big challenge. And here's a connection I would like to make with the, uh, with the upcoming Drucker Forum in Vienna, because we have chosen in Vienna, the theme for this year's Peter Drucker Forum, claiming our humanity, managing in the digital age. Now, I, I should ask to be a bit more interactive. It's the traditional style, right? Who knows Peter Drucker? But don't be afraid not to raise your hand. But I just wanted to know how well known he is in Germany. Yeah, OK, because he originally comes from Austria. And that you may not know. He is Viennese, right? But, but lived in the US, obviously. So, claiming our humanity, measuring the digital age, and the, let's say, the focus of this conference is this immense tension that we see, I would say, almost increasing year over year between the tsunami of digital, of an exponentially growing technology, which is the digital technology, and the human being and the human condition. The human beings don't change overnight, as we know. Uh, the basic, uh, basic traits uh, remain. And so we are confronted with a situation, I think, that we have never seen before, uh, because never in human history has there been a technology evolving over such a long period in an exponential way. So it creates a new world, and it creates a world uh, which is, some people call it VUCA, uh, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. That's a bit frightening, right, if you, if you listen to that. Uh, but obviously, it also creates uh, completely new opportunities. But what we are discovering, and that leads very much also to the theme of, of this conference, what we are discovering is that we seem to be more interested to understand the capability of, human of, of the new digital technology than to understand deeply the human side. Um, when we first started with e-learning, and many of you have gone through this, uh, there, there was the feeling you just need technology and you throw it on people, and that doesn't work. And still we are struggling in understanding what works for human beings. Right? How can we make this ever faster evolving technology really make our, uh, our servant and not becoming, not becoming our master? We, we know a lot about artificial intelligence, robotics, big data, um, analytics, etc. Uh, but when it comes to human being, uh, we are still often very simplistic. And the most complex system involved in the equation of bringing technology and the human side together, the most complex system is the human being, not technology, right? But we tend to 
take it as a given and ignore, ignore it a bit. So that's, um, uh, that's a big conundrum, and I think the big danger, and some of it we can see in Silicon Valley, if I may say so, is that technologists and technocrats are calling the shots. And, and here is my point about Europe. Um, I think Europe has a role to play. I mean, we are always uh, sorry for ourselves that we are not another Silicon Valley, right? So we don't have one in Europe. But on the other hand, we may have something which is different from Silicon Valley. And wouldn't be it great if Europe could bring this other side into the technology-focused discussion around digital and around leveraging digital, given our history, and here we are in the city of Alexander von Humboldt, so it's a perfect place uh, to, to think about that and to talk about that. And by the way, Peter Drucker, uh, whom we quote, of course, for our conference, uh, expressed it in 1967 this way. I, I need to read you that quote. We are becoming aware that the major questions regarding technology are not technical, but human questions. And he said in 1967. And I think it's still worthwhile um, uh, to think about it. And there are movements who bring the human back. I mean, I, I, I cannot go through much, but it, it's interesting that a Financial Times uh, editor, Gillian Ted, who will be speaking at the Drucker, who will be moderating at the Drucker Forum, she just published a book, The Silo Effect, and she is claiming anthropologists in the organizations, right? I, she says this is, this is vital. And you have all these things, uh, and some of them were mentioned, Makers Manifesto, the whole uh, mo movement um, a a around uh, sharing economy, which uh, with the ideas of uh, using excess capacity, but also uh, create, uh, enhancing collaboration, uh, the design thinking movement, uh, agile movement, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I, I think also the big discussion that we saw during the last days, I don't know how many of you have followed that, uh, around Amazon's workplace practices. Have you seen the Financial Times article, uh, the, the New York Times article, about what they call the bruising workplace um, at Amazon? Uh, the point was they are using perfectly digital technology to measure, to measure everything, right? And to manage performance. And the question is again, are, did they find the right way to combine strong and, and, and powerful technology with what's acceptable for human beings? This is the, I, I think this shows how important this discussion is and that we can have efficiency gains everywhere. There's no doubt with this technology uh, from a technocratic perspective, but we must also ask ourselves what is desirable from a human perspective. Uh, when I say that, I'm, I'm not taking a Luddite type of uh, perspective. I think it's, it's one of the biggest opportunities in history we have to leverage this technology, but I think uh, we need second thoughts about the human side. That's, um, uh, that's one of my, the messages I wanted to give. Now let me say a few words about ELIC, European Learning Industry Group. Uh, it is now 15 years that um, Commissioner, at the time Commissioner Redding, later Vice President Redding, uh, gave the impetus to build uh, an organization, um, mainly with industry members, who, who would sort of be a partner to the European Commission when discussing uh, learning uh, questions about using technology for learning. And so ELIC was created, and as it happens, I'm, I met Commissioner, uh, former Vice President Redding, just in Alpbach, and she was very pleased to hear that ELIC is still, after 15 years, well and alive, very international. We have 20 European countries uh, representing the ELIG, and we are growing fast. We had a bit, we have reinvented ELIG in some way, and, and now we, we have a number of very, very important uh, new members, as you can see uh, uh, from, from our list. And uh, so um, uh, Mrs. Redding was, was very pleased and sends her regards uh, to, this, uh, to this conference. Now, I would also like to take this opportunity to really uh, thank very warmly our partners for this conference, to bring it together. 
uh, Volker Meyer Kuckel had already um, said or talked already about our partnership, and I'm really very grateful to have the opportunity to be here, uh, to, to have your support, and um, uh, to, to have this, to bring an international element into your otherwise more German focused conference. So we are very happy to have this opportunity. Uh, and I, I would also like to thank the uh, Fern Uni Hagen, uh, uh, who is helping us tomorrow, who is hosting us tomorrow for the second uh, practice oriented uh, uh, day. Uh, and uh, Helmut Hoyer, I think, is here. So thank you very much for, for this, uh, yeah, for this cooperation. Um, at this point, I would also like to, to, help, to, to thank the sponsors because any organization and what, whatever the, uh, you know, the goodwill and the, uh, let's say, the engagement is, we need funding. We need to fund things. And uh, now, Steel Case is for the second year our, our partner. Our, this year is platinum sponsor, so Sean Cochran, thank you very much for this cooperation. We are very pleased. And by the way, I can mention that Steelcase is also a very strong partner to the Drucker Forum, right? So we are very pleased. Multiple, there are multiple connections. And uh, I, 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 I would like to thank uh, Samsung uh, for their gold sponsorship. Uh, because that's also a, a new member and, 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 a, and a gold sponsor. And Samsung has also enabled us to uh, provide the, uh, the live stream. So thank you, thank you very much uh, uh, for, for, for this support. Yeah, I think I, I, need to, uh, I, I need to end. We have somebody who is, who is helping to watch the time and, and, and uh, be sure we keep the discipline. Let me just end with one sentence. Um, uh, as I said before, I believe we are in a very exceptional period of human history. Uh, we, we have something in our hands uh, which can change dramatically the world, not just economy, but the, how the world works in a way. Uh, it's not coming easy. It's not something that, uh, is get, uh, that we get for granted. There are big dangers. As we know, now we talk about robotics taking away our jobs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think uh, we have an opportunity to shape it and, and to find the right turn, the right digital turn. And I hope that this conference will provide an important contribution and input to this debate. Thank you.